Our Sunday school lesson this week is the first lesson of the summer quarter. And here in the summer quarter, we have an interesting set of lessons that we are going to be going over with the question of whether or not you believe that God can use you. There is this misguided thought that God can only use a certain type of person. And many of us, we begin to believe that God, he cannot use us because we don't fit the character that God can use. There has been this misguided thought that God can only use men and that he will only use a certain kind of man. So we're going to dive into lessons over the next few months where we it, it is made very clear that God, he can use anybody, man, woman, boy, or girl. So for the first two months of our lessons here in the summer quarter, we're going to look at God using women. God, yes, he does use women. There are many times throughout scripture where the Lord uses women. So our first lesson here for the summer quarter comes from the second chapter of Genesis, where, we're going, where we are going to be taking a look at God's creation of woman. Why did God create woman? Why did God create women? So our lesson here today, there in the second chapter of Genesis, in the 18th verse, it opens up with the Lord saying, it is not good that man should be alone. And we'll see there in the next two verses, that man, Adam, we'll see what he was up to. We are told that out of the ground, God formed every beast and bird of the air, and that he would bring them to Adam to see what Adam would call them. We are told there that Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air and the beast of the field. This was Adam's life. Well, we like to say that Adam, that he tended to the Garden of Eden when he was dwelling in the garden, but I want, you, I want to make it very clear that that Adam, he didn't have to do any hard labor. There was no hard, strenuous task that, that Adam had to do in the garden. He simply dwelt in the garden, and most importantly, he dwelt peacefully while living in the garden. There in the 20th verse, we are told that though he was dwelling in the garden, though he was dwelling peacefully in the garden, we are told there that Adam was alone. Every other animal, every cattle of the field, beast of the field, birds of the air. They had their mates. They had something that was comparable, something that, that was like them. But Adam, he was alone. So when we go back to the 18th verse, we'll see this is why God said that, that it's not good for, for him, it's not good for man to be alone. And something that I love about the King James Version, the translation of the KJV, is the fact that it said that that God there, that he made a help meet for, for Adam. So he had no one who was comparable to him. He had no one who was of the same intelligence as he was. He had no one who could understand him. He had, in other words, no one who could relate to him, no one who could could go through the same experiences that he had in the garden and that, that could share the experiences with him as well. So again, we'll see here in our lesson today that the Lord made a helper, a help meet, someone who would be comparable to him, someone who would be just like him. And so when we take a look there at the 21st verse, We'll see that God, that he performed the first surgery on earth where he put Adam to sleep and then he cut into Adam and he took one of his ribs and then he sealed back up that wound. From that rib, we're told there that God made woman and that he brought her to him. And when Adam saw her, he said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. So Adam, he understood very well what it was that the Lord had just did and who it was that the Lord had just made for him. He understood very well that she is just like me, bone for bone, right? Flesh of flesh. She is just like me. This is a statement that I wish many of us would understand today. And the reason why I say that is because over time throughout history, it is made very clear that man does not look at woman as his equal. Man has always tried to stand above and over the woman rather than seeing the woman as someone who is just like him. Again, when God created woman, 
He created man's helper, his help meet, someone who was just like him, someone who was comparable to him, someone that could understand, someone that could relate to him. God, I want to make it very clear, did not create a pet for mankind. God did not create someone who should be viewed at, at as a piece of meat or someone who's just created for the purpose of, of sexual intercourse or for childbirth or for marriage. Many of us, we, we, get, we know that the Lord said that mankind should be fruitful and multiply. But again, that's a statement, as you have heard me say before in the past, that's a statement that we don't understand. Our thoughts on that statement from the Lord is also misguided. Again, God, I want to make very clear, when he created woman, he created someone who was just like man. Someone whose scripture makes it very clear is comparable to man, of the same intelligence, someone who understands, someone who goes through the same things as man. He made man's equal. I want to make that very clear again. He made man's equal. So again, Adam, he understood what it meant for the Lord to take a rib from him and to create her. She was the same as him. That's what we see there in the 23rd verse where Adam said, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now from that verse, some of us, we may begin to wonder whether or not a man is missing a rib in the world today because of woman. Uh, I, I wanna make this also very clear, not to sidetrack too far from, from our lesson. Adam was missing a rib, but again, we are, who are we born from, right? We are born born from from woman. We are born from from our mother's womb, and so no, we aren't missing a rib. No man is missing a rib today. All of us we have the same amount of ribs, unless you know there's some dis, you know deformity or something along those lines. All of us again, we are the same. So when we take a look here at the 24th verse, we'll see that the scripture it says there that a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Again, key words there, joined together there. They should be joined together as one. Paul, this scripture is also misguided from Paul, where Paul, he wrote that wives, that they should submit themselves to their own husband. But at the same time, within that passage of scripture that you find in the book of, or in the letter of Ephesians, Paul, he also made it very clear that a man should do the same. In fact, Paul wrote that a man, he should give everything. He should give his all for his wife, just as Christ gave for his bride and his bride is the church. So again, equality, equal. We, we should be united as, as one in, in marriage. Now, some will begin to wonder, well, does that mean that, that marriage, from what's said there in, in, in Genesis, that marriage is required, that all of us should get married? Is that the case? Is marriage, is that a requirement? Let's answer that question, okay? Because that, that thought, it gets brought up. To answer that question, I want you to turn with me over to the 19th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. We're going to take a look at a couple of verses there. We're going to take a look at the 10th and the 11th verse. Now we'll see there in the 10th verse, after having spoken about marriage, after having spoken about adultery and divorce, we'll see that some of the disciples, they, they suggested a suggestion to Jesus where they said that maybe it is better that one not marry so that they didn't break the law about marriage and about divorce. To which Jesus, he responded to them there in the 11th verse, said to them, all cannot accept this saying, but only those to whom it has been given. In other words, Jesus was saying that marriage isn't for everyone. If, if you are one who does not believe in marriage, Jesus was saying, if that is acceptable to you, then don't get married. But if marriage, if you look at marriage and that's life for you, you, you have this burning desire to be married, to get married, Jesus said, go and get married. Find yourself a wife, find yourself a husband. Get married is what Jesus was saying. But something else that Jesus made very clear in that scripture, and I skipped past that scripture in the 19th chapter of Matthew's gospel. I would encourage you to read that passage of scripture. The thing about marriage is that one should be faithful, of course, right? 
marriage, it requires faith, it requires trust, and it should require love as well. And so Jesus, he would say, if you get married, be honest, be faithful, be true in your marriage. And if you don't get married, Jesus, he would make it very clear as well, don't you go out there being a fornicator, okay? If if you don't want to, to get married, Jesus say, would say to you, no problem. You don't have to get married. Marriage is not a requirement, but again, we must live by faith. Whether we get married or not, we must be faithful in the life that we live. So our lesson back over in the second chapter of Genesis and the 25th verse there, it ends on a note that man and woman, Adam and Eve, that they were both naked and they were not ashamed. So I wanna end our lesson this week, I wanna end it on this note. When God created mankind, that is man and woman, he created us in his image, he created us in his likeness. Man, man had a glow about himself in the garden to where again, we were created in holiness and in righteousness. Holiness, righteousness, our glory, it was lost in the garden when we trans transgressed, when Adam and Eve, when they, when they disobeyed God in the garden. And so again, that holiness, that righteousness, that glory, it was lost in the garden. Man was kicked out of the garden, and then the world as we know it is today, that all began to happen. And so I, I make note of that is because again, God, he created us for the purpose of, of being fruitful and multiplying. And again, like I said, our thoughts on what it means to be fruitful and to multiply, it is misguided. That doesn't mean that we're just supposed to procreate that we're supposed to fill up the world. No, that's not, that's not all that it means. We are to be fruitful in the sense that we are to be a blessing in this world. We, we should be growing together in this world. We should be growing together as a society, man and woman together, married or not. We should be growing as a community. Have we been successful in doing that? What do you think? I think part of the struggle that we face today is that we do not honor and we do not respect one another. And again, we treat women, we treat them as if they are weak. We, we, we demean them, we dishonor them as a society, as, as a whole. And that has been part of man's struggle. That is why we have not grown in the way that we could grow. We truly could be fruitful. We truly could prosper as a whole, as a people, as mankind, but we don't do it. And the reason why we don't do it is because we do not honor each other. We, we do not respect one another. Respect, honor, it will go a long way. So something that we must do, something that we need to do today is we need to learn how to honor, we need to learn how to respect one another, man to man, woman to woman, and then man to woman, woman to man. We need to learn how to honor and to respect one another. When we go around and we treat women as sexual objects or for just, hey, they're there only to be married to, they are only there for childbirth. I wanna make it very clear that we demean, we, dis we dishonor them, and at the same time, I wanna be very clear that we aren't honoring the Lord as well. We aren't respecting God as well. So again, God, he created man for a purpose and he created woman for a purpose. And those purposes is for us to grow together, for us to love one another. Can we do that? Will you do that today? I hope that your answer is yes, okay? And so I hope that you're able to take something away from, from our lesson here this week. I hope that you see why it is that God created woman. He created her to be comparable to man, to be just like man so that she could help man and so that man could help her and so that all of us, so that all of us can grow together. Amen? Amen. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Be sure that you like this video and if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following this channel. Hit the alert bell as well so that you don't miss any notifications for the next video that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.